Now, uh, a few weeks ago, you might recall, I put a video out looking at a uh, design for a three-band antenna for 40, 20 and 10 metres, which wouldn't need any radials. And I'll put a link up there for you somewhere. It's a vertical antenna, which would need a 12 metre fibreglass pole, fed to the base with a 49 to 1 on an, or a 56 to 1, something like that. Now, the good news is I've had a chance to build and test this antenna. So this video will look basically at how easy it was to tune and put together. So let's look at what the antenna came out as in terms of its size. I've got a diagram here for you. You can see it's fed at the bottom with the 49 or 56 to 1 transformer, whatever you want to use, and then fed halfwave transformer. It goes up for about uh, 9.65 meters in my case. I was using sort of 18 gauge insulated wire goes to a loading coil, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, around 34, 35 microhenries for that. That measures about nine centimeters. And it goes up then for a further uh, 1.52 meters above that. And that, that part of the antenna brings in 40 meters. Below the coil, the 9.65 meter portion gives you a half wave on 20 and a full wave on 10. So there's your three bands, no radials and no tuner. And the overall length of the antenna is 11.26 metres. That's just shy of 37 feet. So let's look at the coil then. Now, it's a very simple thing to make. It must be because I can. Uh, the, the thing I used, uh, and this is the, the coil with all the antenna wire wound around it, is a 35 millimetre diameter uh, pipe, PVC pipe. Drill a couple of holes and put a couple of uh, nuts and bolts and washers through there, about M4 size. And what I've got, you can just about see the green wire there, I think. Okay, I used 26 gauge, very thin insulated wire and wound it around about 35, 40 times for a space of about eight centimeters or so between that nut and, uh, and uh, that uh, bolt and that bolt there. And that gives you enough inductance. Now you might think, well, how on earth do I know how to wind enough? Well, you need about 34, 35 microhenries for this. And if you go into a particular website, and I'll show you uh, the screen here, and there'll be a link in the description below as well. This particular website will allow you to put in the diameter of the coil you're using, the, uh, the thickness of the wire, uh, you look, and you can type in the amount of microhenries you're looking to try or try to achieve. And it'll give you then an idea of the, um, of the size of the coil, how many windings, and how long or how wide the coil should be, okay? pretty accurate in my case. This comes out, as you can see here, just around 35 microhenries, which is plenty. Now for this antenna, it's going to be bang on 34 microhenries. It could be 32, 33, 36, something in that ballpark. That figure gives you enough impedance to choke 20 and 10 meters at the coil, because that's important. You want the antenna to be a half wave for 20 and a full wave for 10 meters and only really excite those particular frequencies and bands between the uh, transformer and the bottom of the coil. Above the coil, we have the much shorter piece of wire. That is the only bit that would really be used for 40 meters in conjunction with the below one as well. So that top wire only operates on 40 meters because this coil not only chokes off 20 and 10, it loads up 40 as well. So on 40 meters, the antenna is a shortened half wave. So it's about 55 to 60% the length of a typical half wave on 40 meters. Another tool that was useful to check, I've got the, the right sort of number of windings and everything to get the inductance I needed for the coil, was to use something called a uh, Peak Atlas LCR meter. And uh, the one that I actually got, I've got in front of me here, is the uh, Peak Atlas LCR uh, 45. It comes pre-calibrated. It costs less than a hundred pounds, less than a hundred dollars. Uh, you switch it on, it basically automatically goes to inductance. And basically all you do, you attach one probe to one part of the coil, one bolt of the coil, the other one to the other part, the other end of the coil, and it will then give you a figure in terms of microhenries. Okay, it's that simple. It's such a, an easy thing to use. I uh, fully recommend getting one of those. It allows you then to really get a very accurate picture of what sort of inductance you're getting with your coil. It was invaluable in this situation. So there we are, uh, about 35 microhenries then. Now, in terms of tuning the antenna, a pretty simple process. Originally, I cut the antenna using these sort of traditional lengths of about 10 meters 
uh, for the bottom part of it, then the coil, then about 1.8 meters above it. And what I found, as you can see here in the first evening I did this after work, uh, I found that the SWR was rather, uh, was, was low, quite low in the, in, in, the, in below bands. So on 20 meters, you can see here, the dip was well below 14 megahertz and, it, and the same occurred on 40 meters. It was well below seven megahertz. I didn't have time to check 10 meters that first night because it was started to rain, it got dark, so I had to, had to go in. The next night I dashed back out there uh, trimmed a few times uh, to take it down to the lens that I showed you at the start and as you can see now we've got a good match on 40 meters a good match on 20 meters and in fact a good match as well on 10 meters so there we are three bands are in a decent bandwidth you saw there on 40 meters as well of about 100 kilohertz or so or maybe just a bit more uh, on a 2 to 1 SWR so I'm very happy with that I've trimmed it to be uh, its lowest point uh, around the, the phone portion of, uh, of 40 metres. That's where I'm going to operate. You can leave it a bit longer if you want to go down to FT8 or, or CW. By the way, of course, what you'll notice as well is when you trim that top bit, you only trim that top bit for 40 metres. The bit about, about that is that every centimetre will have a quite a big effect or a bigger than you think effect on tuning the antenna. So be careful about how much you take off at the time on that top wire. My, uh, my advice is to attach the bottom wire first, the long bottom wire with the coil on top of it, get 20 and 10 meters okay, and then attach that top wire because that shouldn't really be affected. That shouldn't really affect 20 and 10 meters at all. That top wire will just be used to tune in 40 meters and so do it in, in that order, okay? And great, so it's all set up. I'm really looking forward to using it. And actually, spoiler alert, I have already used it portable. All right, so I'll bring that video out in a couple of days for you. I had a really good time with it, and I'll show you how well it worked. So there we are, part one. We've built the antenna, we've tuned it, we've got a three band vertical without the need for any radials, and gets us 40 meters in a, in a small space. Can't be bad, can it? Anyway, there'll be another video coming up over here somewhere, and the chance to subscribe over there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again on another one. 7-3 from the south coast of the UK. Bye for now.